This is Muta Baruka. We want to present to you a wholesome kind of level of consciousness right now. So subscribe and tell your friend them. This is Muta Baruka. As I say, I don't really believe in a capital punishment. But I think on something. Even after the program done last night, I think on this thing. But you know, a whole heap of people shall don't believe in a capital punishment. Because it's a next person family get murdered. So if it really come at your doorstep where your family get murdered, even in front of you, or even when you're gone and work and come back, you see police at your yard, and you hear say your son and your daughter and everybody get murdered in the house. I wonder if the philosophy, even the philosophy where all the people are about, no, we don't have the punishment that we are there, capital punishment. If it's that still old, if it was their family that got murdered or was murdered, and believe you me, I don't think so. I don't think I will leave people who defend capital punishment at that moment. They would actually say, well, make the man go to prison, go, go, go spend out him the same life, and then we're there. That is why I think on it. That is why I think on it, because it's really hard say revenge don't take hold of people. Or not revenge, but the penalty of a life, your life, don't take hold of people. And even in the Christian Bible, in, a, the, old, in a, the way we call the, the Old Testament, it's sprawl right across it, death for death, life for life. As a matter of fact, the Bible is the most vicious perspective of punishment that you will ever find in anywhere. We are talking about adultery, which how much one in a Jamaica can say he never commit adultery yet. And in the Bible, it's a death penalty for that. We are talking about children disobeying their parent. I wonder which child in a Jamaica never disobeyed their parent yet. And the Bible says, a stone to death for any child will disobey their parent. So we are talking about some serious punishment in the Bible that come down through generations and generations. And people don't recognize that God is a jealous God. That in the Bible too, God is a jealous God. And he will wipe out a whole city like when Moses got out. And kill even the babies that is on the mother's breast. And take with the woman them for your own. And that is a command from God according to the Jewish Bible. The King James Bible. The Old Testament as them call it. The Torah. That we see this level of viciousness and revenge. That is perpetuated by men. In the name of God. And we come to a stage you now where we claim civilization, civilized time. But when we say civilized time, I don't think I will be Did that think about where we see Aguan right now, especially in Jamaica. I don't think I will be away. Didn't realize that till I read the reaches up. The youth them get vicious. And I will say it again. I think there's something deeper that is happening in Jamaica that most of these analyzers and psychologists and psychiatrists and all the people them who claim knowledge of human behavior. I think that there's something more than what they are considering 
You know, people usually say it's the parents. You know, them don't have no father and all them things there. I never have no father in my house. I never have no father in my house. I never have a conversation with no father. But I know in my mind, I think, say, if a man do something, the, thing, the first thing come to me now, I should I kill him. So when we are analyze and analyze and analyze, I contend that there's a deeper thing that is happening in our society that we still don't put your finger upon. And I can't tell you what, but I know in my heart of heart, say, something is happening in a Jamaica. And it can be solved. It can be solved. It can be solved, but you have to know what is it that you are going to come up against to solve it. This is the stepping razor. You know, I will let people listen to this program and foreign and even when you them tape it, them listen to it on YouTube. So you may say no. How the hell a man can steal America and pack up a box of gun and send it come at Jamaica? There is no war taking place where a man has said, Jamaica fight against the next country. Jamaica fight against the nearest country to them, maybe Cuba or Haiti or so. A man really, they are foreign. And a pack up gun in a box, in a fridge, in a television. And a send it come at Jamaica. And a custom officer, nowhere in the box. And him just send it on to the person who's supposed to get it and call it money and him know say the gun them in there is to kill other Jamaican. What kind of art and mind that is? What is it that him, him, him achieve apart from some dollars in his pocket or some revengeful attitude that when he was there at Jamaica, he did have a gross against a man and he decided say, why I'm going to send out some gun to make them boy they done them brother there. You know? And yet still now, the, 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 the idiot part of it is that the person them who collect the gun and go up on the road and plan to kill people. Who no going to dead? Who no don't understand that? The police going to kill you no know, are the person who no kill them friend we ain't gonna know and kill you no. Know. And then some, you and your friend gonna kill the person who kill you. And let the madness and the cycle keep going on and on and on and on and on. Them said Jamaica population, the majority of Jamaicans is under 35, not reach 40 yet. So you tell me, so Jamaica go full up of pure old people because under 35 is when we say, I kill one another. Under 35 is when we say, I've gone. And I shoot wildly. Madness. I get ten thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar for go kill man or woman. Them no business or picnic. Them watch the whole heap of movie upon the, 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 the Netflix and anywhere them I see the movie them. I don't realize eh, the bad man always get dead in at the end. You don't see that. You can't stop saying that, you know. The bad man always get dead in the end. Police shoot him. And sometimes he even shoot himself. Them, them brother, you know, them not going to shoot themselves because them just feel say Them have something in them and say, them not going to get catch because God will protect them. God will protect them. Man kill people and get from police and a ball out. Why does God help me forget from the boy them, you know? God help him from get away with the boy. They don't go and get killed. That is the attitude. The, 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 the attitude of the police a couple years ago was that, you know. Because a policeman tell me that, you know, one, one little place for me the day. I have four and him come to me and I say, boy, I'm out of me. I tell you the truth. You know, see, me I tell you, say, I'm an angel, you know, but if a man, if I see a youth with a gun, you know, whether I'm a shot to shoot me or not, you know, I will get rid of him, you know. Time is supposed to have the gun. 
I will if a police I think that. See me call you a thing for a kill man. And see me the police I think for kill. You even if you never find you, I shoot nobody. Because most of the time I hear the people in my ball, you know. Look how the police them come kill me. Look this time, look how the police them come kill me that. It's true them attack, you know, but the police know say him did kill somebody, but when them catch him, him never have no gun, him never did shoot nobody, but them know say him kill somebody already. So them are take it out upon him now by saying, you kill boy already, you know, you think, you know, I'm not going yet, so no, never easy up. And them kill him. There's so much police killing that go on in a drumming, I don't think they, the people them want to look about police killing can keep up with it. Because there's so much killing that go on in Jamaica, I don't think the police them can investigate it enough. You tell you, you not going to dead. And you know, all you want to talk about, you know, this and dead and this and that. Them don't, none of you don't want to die. You know, young and ready, you know, don't want to die. So don't matter come talk about, but I'm kill a man and go to prison. You know. The man, them like sending you to no prison, them sending you to no grave. Them, with this thing I know is that every man thinks I'm a bad man. Every man thinks I'm a bad man. Because everybody know a man who have a gun or who does not care. So I'm just stab up a man, cut a man, shoot and all them really. And feel say I will get away with it. One of the ways to prevent certain conflict, you know, you hear them say, he who fights and run away he will live to fight another day. Them you tell our business about them thing and them you tell our business about them thing there about you from runway. Runway come like you're a coward. I thought them are thinking, you know, say, oh, man, I'm not coward. Oh, you see the boy, he can't come bully me. And you are now. You see, if a man start running him down, he might go like say, my iron to him now, him now, him running now. He might go stand up and say, I bet you don't stab me now, stab me now. Watch a man. Don't bother better man, say, he can't stop me, you know. Ah, if a man tell you, say, oh, you see you, me I'll kill you, you know, boy. Don't take it lightly. i tell you that, you know. If a man send a treat, you know, don't take it lightly, you know. Because the way the man, them head wired now, you know. By any means, they just say, them treat you, know, even if you carry out the threat. For sure, say, boy, them now bluff. Them are going to do it. And you have some people around there you now, I push them on with dollars. You know, you and a man have something, and you know, why really dirty up your hand, you just call a youth and give him all that ten thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar. I say, you see the boy, I, I, I don't know why you done the boy, you know. And then that is the end of that. And you see a man who give the money if you done the boy. Go tell him friends, say, Cho, you want to make it two in the money for done the boy, and him done the boy, and the man who might tell that, him never even know, say, a man know, the man know one of the boy friend who him done, and go tell him, say, hey, you want to say, when him the gay, a man some money for done, done the boy, done the boy, and him done him. He said, why I him do it both? Him gone up a female and I got done the man who give the man the money for done the man who the trouble him, who the man who kill him, never have no beef with the man who kill. And now him in a problem because the man who give him the money for kill the man who never have no beef with decides, why I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. So you say the thing can't stop. But it can't stop. I mean, keep I say it can't stop, but you don't know what to say and what to do, but I know it can't stop, you know. It can't say so all the while, after. It can't say so all the while, anyway. You are listening to the Black Radar YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and keep listening. But, if you say, three, four people, if you say, cut short, stab up and cut short, I go on now. It's it, 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 no, it, no, it, it, it frightening. It's scary. We go to St. Lucia, I said, St. Lucia, I'm there at Trinidad. And I'm going to talk to someone. And I said, So you know, come out, come out, Jamaica. Come out, Jamaica. Come out, Jamaica. You're a mad mother. Come out with Jamaica. You know, say, the Jamaican people, they're going to kill them one another. And I said, But Trinidad is not different. <laughs> Trinidad is different, you know. Trinidad is not different, but Trinidad is different in that way where we see the murder of them. The intensity. You know, 
usually a man on him bike, I'm, jo I'm always in a lobby to stop this pillion riding bike thing, you know. Because the pillion rider, them is the man, the man them who have the gun. You know, see? I, w I, w I was always telling say, look, we know about damning one no Ludi at, the, at the, the, the door of one bar. A man still don't want to play Ludi or even damning no one of them really. But there's certain things that we have to stop, though. And one of them, if you stop playing Domino in front of bar, and stop playing Ludi in front of bar, because you don't know who you sit on there and play the Ludi with, and you don't know who stand up and I watch you and play the Domino. That man can't pan a bike just pass and just fire a shot. I'm going to say it time and time again, you know. The majority of time, the man who them go for shot, him get where, and the man who innocently, have him last six blank now where I go cool the game and win. Him get shot and dead. And the cycle of madness keep going on because the man ride away. Living again to kill the next person in our next game on a bar edge. We need to understand where I go on. We must stop playing domino and Ludi on the side of the road. If you want to play domino and Ludi, go to your yard. Call your friend Pani Varanda and sit down and play the Ludi. Lock your gate. Don't follow the politician about when they take power, they're going to sleep with your window and your door open. It's madness. Sleep with the window and which door open. Anybody do that now? The security man, they have beard. Security, a beard. Because the man, the man, they have respect for security, for, for, for grill again. For them to the grill, them say, Chow, they must carry a crowbar and just bend out that. And we are going. Bernard Spears said a long time, not speak to him, people, them, you know, it's hard. Politician, them, paint this picture, a utopian picture, Shangri-La picture. But when you come from the ground, man, it's a different thing, different, different thing, totally. Yeah, man, different thing. You think it's easy for you in an area and you hear a gunshot, a fire out of your yard, and you're in your house, and you can't come out. And you pity them in there, get traumatized. You think it's easy? It's not easy at all. Many a nights, two o'clock a man, me a gunshot a clap. And I say, Oh, that country is sound so near to the yard, Rasa. So near, man. You just lay down there, whoops, it don't get nearer. Sometimes you wake up and somebody, and you tell us, Boy, I'm your country, and I say, Yeah, they're not killing them, they're up on the road, they're bridging. I say, Hey, where are you? I'm sorry, I don't know where you know, but where, 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 and lay, 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 lay. I say, Wow. And they say, there. And they saw it there. We look upon where I go on and we say, why the man them say the road them want to fix? I say, more time say the road want to fix. I say, talk to your government. The man, I talk to me like I'm being a government. I say, talk to your government. If that is they saw it there. You know the man where, where, where I come out of the bank and I'm shooting him there, I went name, Greg Christie, I was so far. And when them ask him, when they think him say, check your government, and people start to lick against him and I say, it's a bad thing that him say and all them things. Like then wait, you know, if a man cares and match up in a in a patrol, who if you say uh, who, who, who cause it? Who cause him front end for match up in a patrol? And who cause him water? Let him not have no water. And who cause electricity for lack of when the people them do them homework and all them something there and him pay the light bill? You have to ask the government. You have to ask the government. So the reality of it is that if you do a whole man, man, I look on it away. But you really have to ask the government.
Because they don't have no clue about the, 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 the crime rate. They don't have no clue about it. They don't they have no clue. They get all of these modern technology and all them something there, and it'll get worse. That means it's something them don't understand and something them don't touch. And I say, I will leap away just and look on the periphery of what is happening. But there's a deeper thing that happened that we have to still analyze it and figure it out. Yeah, man. There's something I was going to say to the last, I'm going to bring it up again. There's something that is happening in a Jamaica that me, nor you, nor Mr. William, the Minister of National Security, or the Prime Minister, is understanding. But it can be unraveled. It can be unraveled. All we have to do is look at a different level and a different way. A woman, what's up, Mr. Muta? Them let out the demon in a Jamaica. <laughs> oh, I do this poor let out demon. Oh, old demon stay by the way. Anyway, she said, them let out the demon in a Jamaica. So no, no, go stop. It no, go stop. That's what she said. Well, why, sister, me I tell you, if you feel safe, no, go stop. I better the whole of it just left Jamaica or something, but the, anything where man do, man can undo it. Yes, anything where man do, man can undo it. That's what me say. Hello. We're going to an interview here. The interview is really about something that is current that took place in Parliament this week. You know, we have on the line Mr. U Small. U Small was called to the Jamaican Bar in 1963. He's a member of the Jamaica Bar Association and served on the Bar Council as Secretary. He has shared many boards, including the Rent Assessment Board, Defamation Law Review Committee, and the Justice Committee of the private sector. We can't call out all of these things because we really want to talk to him. And it's going to take too long to call out all of these things. So we have on the line, Mr. U Small. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mota. Uh, thank you for accommodating us again. You know, we, we really appreciate it still. Okay, so as you know, this week we see a development take place. I don't know if it's the first it happened, but you can tell us better that the Prime Minister's wife was elected, I was say selected, as Speaker of the House in Parliament. Uh, can you, all right, tell me, is, is this, it ever happened yet, Vera? Um, um, our husband and wife team is in that position in Parliament? No, that has never happened before. It never happened before. In which you have had <clears throat> husband and wife sitting in Parliament. Yeah. But that's at the level. I have had instances that I have been able to research on time where we have one of wife sitting in the cabinet. Yes. But never before have we had the current situation in which the Prime Minister is the head of the government and his wife is the head of the House of Representatives, which is the House of Members of Parliament who are elected by the, the people. It's the first time it has happened in Jamaica, and as far as I have been able to do research on time, I don't think it has happened in any other country. Oh, yeah? You see, Ross, it never happened in other countries. I have been able to find. I found instances where you have husband and wife in the cabinet. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there are many instances of husband and wife in, um, in Parliament. I think uh, one of the ones that you may remember yeah. is that I think one of Jacob's who was um while it was sitting in the in the um the parliament when he was president. I think so. I, I tried to check it but I didn't have enough time. Yeah. All right. I, I find it I don't know if it's me, but if a man if the Prime Minister who's the head of the government and his wife who is the speaker of the house, if there's always conflicts going on in the house between between the opposition and them. And, and, the, and the government itself. You, you think, sir, it's going, it, 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 you can't give a fear judgment in the house if the, 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 the opposition says something that sounds harsh to the prime minister. Is it possible to give a fear judgment from the speaker of the house if she's, she's, the, husband, she's the wife of the prime minister? Well, whatever they want to think about it. Um, we have to 
listen to some of what Mrs. Hurley said um, on a radio program. I got it from uh, the Nation Live. Yeah. And she said that she had prepared herself to be the deputy speaker. She had learned a lot about the procedures of Parliament. She spoke about why she thought there ought to be good order in Parliament. And she spoke about the way she has prepared herself to become the speaker. Um, there's a definite conflict because people are going to rise up from the opposition at a point of order. Yes. There's things that may happen while the Prime Minister is speaking. And generally because he's the leader of the government and he's sitting in the House, there is going to be a lot more tension than there would be normally. You know that the person who's going to rule out those objections Yes. Um, the Prime Minister's wife. Is his wife. Yeah, I, I was... The statement that Mrs. Owens is made, yeah. she seems to understand the potential difficulty there is. Yes. I, I think we we'll have to watch her very carefully to see whether she lives up to the very high standard that she says she's going to aim for. But, um... Why I, I don't I don't I don't know, but I was talking to my wife about this thing, and the thing about me and her in a position where either she's I, I, in a higher position, or I am in a higher position, and other people is there talking against me, against certain proposition that I make. I don't know how. I mean, even if she say she going to be fair and not one-sided, I don't know. How emotions and the connection can come into it. I don't, I don't see how that you're going to show that out of the road. Well, because you're in a. Let, eh? let, let, let me tell you what the difficulty that she faces. As she has pointed out, in our parliament today, the picture of the House of Representatives, we have like a cross talk, and the discipline inside the parliament is very, very low. Yes. Um, not only that, a lot of people are there using them cell phone and are paying, paying attention to Oh gosh, when I've been there and see it. And unfortunately also, we have a practice in Jamaica that I don't think helps the dignity of Parliament. And that is banging on the desk. Yes. Banging on the desk. Um, and to show approval. And um, that makes a lot of noise. It makes it difficult to control the house. Um, one thing about the structure of the House of Representatives that I am concerned about, and I hope that it will be addressed if ever we have a new parliament, is that you have two sides facing each other, opposite to each other. In some parliaments, the shape of the chamber and how the people are seated is not in a horseshoe. Yeah. So that everybody in that side of just opposite to each other to poke and yeah. the other side. Um, this is why it has a big challenge. Um, there is a lot of, there's a lot of tension that is involved. More so than in when you have another person who is the speaker of the house. Because it's natural for the Prime Minister to have discussions with his wife on things related to the government. Not only because she's an MP, but because she, she's his wife. So how yeah. is she going to hold that balance? Yeah. She's taking on the job. I think we must hold her to the high standard that she says she's going to perform. And it may be that we have an opportunity now to have um, better standards of behavior in the parliament because the parliament is a very unruly place. Yeah. But see, we don't know what, all right, what is taken out of parliament at home. What, what you carry from the parliament at home when the two of them is at home that is really a problem yeah I mean, you know it, it's not just about principles there's a lot of politics the, 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 the opposition will ask questions we don't have backbenchers on the government side who have any sense of independence to really ask difficult questions by the prime minister because we don't want to a political tradition where it's just us and them. We don't feel that we can voice difficult questions to the government when our party forms the government. Yes. But 
um, there are going to be questions of where questions are put in the Prime Minister and people want to ask additional information and the Prime Minister is not so ready prepared to, to, to answer it yeah. or his budget and the proposition is going to be so going to be insisting at the answer how is she going to rule? but she has chosen to accept the post she says that she has prepared herself for it. She has spoken about the high standard that she wants to achieve. We have to watch her. We have to keep her under close surveillance and see how she develops as a speaker. Uh, let me ask you something. The, the, the lady before that resigned from the house and she had the opportunity of having a button to stop and not hearing what the, speak, the person get up and saying. What do you think about that, that pressing of that button? You think them should have disregarded it, show it, it, take it out? What do you think about that? I, I, don't, I don't know enough about it, I don't have to comment on that. Because, and the loud, the loud <coughs> disrespectful behavior is on both sides. You tell Mr. Warmington, you don't want anybody, I don't think there's anybody in the house who Yes, in the way that she behaves. Yes. <laughs> and his method of speaking and generally conducting himself. So that he don't respect anybody. See, for example, when he um is a ruling his being against him by Mr. Barclay. Yes. Who's in the same cabinet as him. He behaves as if he's out on the street having a fire. Yeah. So, 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 what can be done in, in other cases? I mean, you mean no, no, no consequence, not not all can be done. No consequences because that's the nature of our politics. We have to lead by example, and maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to lead. But you know, those very controversial matters that are coming up. Yeah, so they require a lot of balance and tolerance. For example, when the debates come up about. The Constitution, yes. and then the Constitution. We already have a situation that the government doesn't want to leave the Privy Council. They keep saying we need to talk about it some more, but it's something that we've been talking about for more than 20 years. And that is going to be a very testy debate in Parliament. So, 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 so the, 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 the oldest government is saying that they want to, even though they're talking about Republic, they want to maintain. The, 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 the proof of council. That's what they're saying. I think that is what the public has concluded from the day. They uh -huh. are definitely not open to the idea of making sure that all the times with the King of England are caught once and for all. They want to hold on to the proof of council. And any pretty words they use to try and say, okay, at a later stage, we're going to consider it. If you look at section 110 of the Constitution, which is not deeply entrenched, it has five or six references to His Majesty in Council. Yeah. And all of those are in reference to the Privy Council, um, um, which is the final court for Jamaica now. So what about the what about the Commonwealth? Staying in the Commonwealth? Well, that hasn't come up for a discussion. The Commonwealth is becoming the talk shop. It's not really an effective international uh, um, gathering that has a great impact upon the economy and the day-to-day -day lives of our people. But what is it? What, what, all right. Uh, uh, tell, me, tell the people then what is it that the Commonwealth is responsible for? All right. The Commonwealth is for the most part an organization of countries that used to be part of the British Empire. So you have the old white commonwealth like Canada, New Zealand, Australia. And Barbados. No, Barbados is a black country, man. No, research. no but them is part of the commonwealth. Yes, no, I say the old white countries first. Okay. And then you have the countries that gained independence early in the 60s, India, and not 60s, the 40s, India and a few others, and not all the countries that were British colonies joined the Caribbean. Yeah. And they have a lot of African and Caribbean countries 
who as they became independent joined the Commonwealth. Yeah. At one time, there was a great advantage because the Commonwealth had better access to British markets. Today, there are forms of international cooperation and so on that take place under the umbrella of the Commonwealth. But in addition to that, those countries that were former colonies, you've had some other, then the African countries joined that in Mozambique, um, Rwanda, I think Gabon, how many the African countries that have joined. So, you know, they get together and talk, but in terms of the things that they actually do, it's not that much. Okay, but, but it was a big thing when they expelled um, Mugabe from the Commonwealth. People were saying, go, they don't they get rid of him from the Commonwealth. Yes, so that's a foreign policy. But today, it doesn't have the same influence on our foreign and external relationships. Okay. Yeah. The countries of Africa are speaking to each other across language barriers, across the yeah. line, much more. And so you find that there is a lot of discussion with regard to what's happening in places like Niger, yeah. another country. Yeah. Um, that was not really got together to talk about you. It takes my power. No, no, know. but you know, one thing leads to the next. <laughs> I don't know the big argument, but I want to lead to the next. You know, Commonwealth, Republic, you know, Privy Council, one of them connected to Europe, to America, to England. All right. So, you are saying that we have to just watch and see what's going to happen. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. I think it's very fair to Mrs. Holness. Yes. But it's a very dangerous precedent. Um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's sure works. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see. We'll see. It's just that I find it difficult to believe, say. I mean, I, I hear what you say from from our acceptance speech. I hear what you say, but Mr. Wallace is our husband, and them go home together. You know, that is really the... That was my initial reaction. That was your initial reaction? The way she spoke. Yeah. How she spoke is very important. But part of the problem is, of course, that because... We don't have a tradition of standing up and say, boy, you're going to look away. Maybe we ought to do something about it. But then again, she is a very effective MP, to say. But a lot of people are saying that. Them don't see it, it shouldn't happen. That a lot of people are saying that. Well, you That's know, it. it happened already. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's happened already. We have, have to watch it carefully. Yes, yes, yes. So we yes. have to chance. Yeah. Yes, well, give thanks, give thanks for really sharing your knowledge with us again. I you know so we're going to call you again and again and again, so, you know. Well, you know, you must look for some younger youth to talk, you know. Why? But, why? Because you're not getting enough. No, the youth, them have the knowledge, but you have the wisdom, man. A wisdom why? that's so far, and the knowledge. Well, you're, 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 you're flattering me now, man. You're flattering me. No, I'm not flattering you, but that's true. The, the, the young have the wisdom, the knowledge, but the, the elder ones have the wisdom. Uh, so, so we know it in the African retention philosophy, you know. Well, I understand that, but um, we, need to, we need to encourage young people to take much more interest in public life. Yes, yeah, yeah. Our efforts at political education, of educating them as to the Constitution, and educating them as to what are the responsibilities of citizens. To make sure we preserve democracy. And that, um, we have that on the board, you know. We have that on the board. Well, you are doing it, but in terms of the school system, yeah. and the programs, and the work of the Constitution. Yeah. We are starting with the, with the education of people about the Constitution, you know. No. What is in it? What will happen if we try and change it a certain way? And make sure that people have a high level of interest so they begin to understand that they have to come out and vote. Yeah. 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 And that's a fact, you vote the same one. You know, I've always been a candidate, you vote the principle now. Yeah. What is the school book you want for governing the country going forward? Because it takes much too long, 60 years, to deal with these problems about having Queen Elizabeth and King this and King that at the head of 
Oh, well, we're getting there. We're getting there. You know, we're getting there. Yeah, man, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. I don't know if it's my mind, but I don't know if anybody noticed that the countries they will deal with, with them called true democracy, real true democracy, have the most corruption and criminality that exists in them country. Anybody notice it? I just mean when I notice it. The Lupana country they will say they are not democracy. Ah, uh, them is partially democracy. The most of problem where Mr. Aguan in this so-called democracy country, democratic country, I should I say, me not see Aguan in them country there. What them say democracy is the best form of government. Is it? The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating, and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support. We got people are left Canada. Yes, we got people are left Canada. They're sick and tired of it. But I guess the other man grass always look greener. All right, so public service. Go out to play this as public service because it's amazing. It's really amazing. All right, here we go. The interview is not easy. I know because I'm a former U.S. visa officer and I've conducted thousands of visa interviews. Now I help people prepare for their visa interview. So if you're going into the visa interview for the first time, just know that you have a great opportunity to make a positive impression on the visa officer and you need to get ready for it. It is not enough to go to your visa interview without any prior thought or preparation. At minimum, you need to think about the purpose of the visa interview, what kind of questions you might receive, and how to best provide information that is going to highlight your situation to the visa officer, given the visa class that you're applying for and your personal situation. Here, I'm gonna share five important tips to get ready for your first visa interview. The first thing to keep in mind for your visa interview is that the officer that you talk to probably hasn't seen your case before you show up to the visa window. This means that your presentation and your interview are extremely important. The outcome of your interview absolutely depends on the impression you leave upon the officer. At Argo, we always recommend responses to the visa questions that are concise, but also complete and thoughtful, and talk to why you qualify for the visa class that you are applying for. It's also important to keep in mind that visa officers are taking notes during your interview. And one thing that visa officers will put in their notes if they're thinking about issuing the case or they have a good impression of your interview is that the applicant presents well. What does it mean to present well during the visa interview? Well, first, it includes this idea of, you know, concise but complete answers, but it also it includes your presentation. So you wanna make sure you have a presentation that is confident, that you seem comfortable, that you don't sound memorized or robotic in your responses, and also that your physical appearance matches and is coherent with the visa class that you're applying for and the story that you are telling during your visa interview and in the responses that you provide to the visa officer. The second thing to keep in mind is that documents are secondary. While you should have some documents prepared to back up what you're saying in your visa interview, you do not want to obsess over them and you especially do not want to present them as soon as you walk up to the visa window. You want to wait for the first question and then present verbally the highlights about your case. If the officer asks to see any documents about what you're talking about, you want to be prepared to quickly give them the documents, or you can politely offer one or two pieces of evidence in the context of what you're talking about. But never ever show up to the visa window and just say, hey officer, look at my documents. They're not going to do it and it's going to set your visa interview off on the wrong foot. The third thing is to be prepared to speak to a U.S. government official. There's some cultural work involved in this concept. You are speaking to an American official who almost certainly has been prepared in American education institutions and is very culturally American. So you wanna to speak to them in a way that they are going to find comfortable and that they're going to understand. This means looking them straight in the eye if your eyes are moving all over the place during your interview and you're going like this, this, up, down, round, 
This, for in American culture, is a sign of lying. And so the visa officer is going to uh, be less willing to trust your case if you are not making good eye contact. The other thing is that you want to be very concise and you want to be very direct in your speech. Telling a really long story to finally get to the point at the end is likely to annoy the visa officer and it's not going to create a good impression in your visa interview. So think about how an American official would, would want to be spoken to and then prepare your visa interview from there. Fourth, your visa record is permanent. The DS-160s you submit, the notes the officer takes on your case, and the records associated with your fingerprints are all permanent parts of your visa record. So you need to be very careful about how you present your case, you need to always be truthful, and you need to be prepared. Fifth, visa officers aren't generally mean or grumpy people. You have to realize that they are doing a hard job. They usually interview over 100 people in a morning and they're making complex decisions over and over again on visa cases to ensure that they align with U.S. immigration law. So what does this mean? It means you need to do the visa officer a favor and make their job easier. You can do this by following the advice in this video. Be organized, present confidently, be concise, but be clear and thoughtful and complete in your answers. Getting ready for your visa interview is a way to make the visa officer's job easier. And it's also how you're going to make a good impression on them and hopefully get your visa approved. Gun rights for open the eyes of the people. Em. Come to the truth, yeah. You're tuned into Iran is the mood, yeah. I think I kick out of this big boot, yeah. What? Both of us shoot, yeah. It's time again. We represent the African names. We're going to start with the girl names. Zaya. Zaya. Z-A-Y-A, Zaya means hope or fate. Hope or fate. Kabibi. Kabibi. K-A-B-I-B-E. Kabibi means little lady. Little lady. Kaila. Kaila. K-A-E-E-L-A. Kaila means power. And braveness. Nice name them here. Catalia. Catalia. K-A-T-A-L-E-Y-A. Catalia means pure. Pure. So that's Kaya. K-A-Y-A. Means hope or fate. Kabibe. K-A-B-I-B-E. Means little lady. Kaila. K-A-E-E-L-A. Means power and braveness. And Catalia. K-A-T-A-L-E-Y-A -A -E means pure. Boy's name, Azizi. Azizi, A-Z-I-Z-I. -Z -I. Azizi means the precious one. Amadi. Amadi, A-M-A-D-I. -I. Amadi means free man. China. China, C-H-I-N-N-A. -N -N China. China means God's own blessing. God's own blessing. And fella. F-E-L-A, fella means happy and lucky. So that's Azizi, A-Z-I-Z-I, -Z -I, means the precious one. Amadi, A-M-A-D-I, -I, Amadi, means free man. China, C-H-I-N-N-A, -N -N China means God's own blessing. And fella, F-E-L-A, fella means happy and lucky. Oh, nice. So there we go, you know, we are going around Kingston and... I tell you, say, you see them skyscraper apartment building them I put up in the, the place. I don't know, I don't know if you're next one, you know, but I know about advancement and housing and everything there, but it don't look good. It don't look good at all. Because you know what? It look good now because it just make, you know, but 20 years down the line, it ever look like some project building. Mark my word, it's going to look like some little project. You know, them project building where you go in uh, America, go see, in uh, LA and New York. You see the project, them. And so it's going to look. So it look new now, you know, but wait till it look more down the line. It's amazing that them build up the building, them, so. And I mean, people see that, I mean, the government see that has progress. Because them have put. I mean, you have some place where you never even know, say, them kind of high building they could have gone in Jamaica. 
We had some little piece of land where you could have looked upon and say, We had a little piece of land they could have made a park or something, you know. I think the man them put up some four or five story living area in it. Alpha and Barbican Road there. May I tell you, it look away. You have one way in front of Jamaica house, the one there. I got one the tall man, look like the man in the lab. I, I think to say, I hear one of those pipe on the government over there, so, you know, so put it as high as they can go. Right in front of Jamaica house. So much of them they bought the place. That's why the Prime Minister talked about, you know, the construction thing is booming. Of course it's a boom. But what is the long consequence of booming? Look on the one on a Rutland Road. Little rain comes the other day and people couldn't go into them apartment. Car flood out and all them something there. They never think about it. Plus the parking area they might get limited. Yeah, the parking area them. In a Kingston, them not have no real parking area for park a car. You understand? So I don't know. A progress them call it. Progress them call it without understanding logistics. And that me I say, just like how when people that build all them road up a stone area, so them, them never expect so much care and things. Julia you, 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 a buggy. A buggy them did build them place to find out. I have to go up a garden town and all up a Lawrence Tavern and them places. They never make the to have a coaster bus a drive up a them places. Them road they did build for buggy, car, donkey. Donkey, cat. And that it built for. But now you see the logistics no work out. So we shouldn't make that happen again. That we have built places in this modern time and now so far down the line. And what it will take. And what will happen if we don't see so far down the line that we know say the road and the building them will not sustain any longevity. If we think down the line. We have to be thinking down the line. And I don't think that so. these guys know what they're doing. Them see the fire, the, the quick money, you know, 40 a ton dollar for a little square. And them say, you know, 40 a ton, 45 million, I would say 40 a thousand. 45 million for a little square. 30 a million for a little square. But down the line, down the line, it might come like some little new ghetto. Yeah, some new ghetto we place. I think a joke where I make, that is what I make, where I look like a new ghetto. Yes, when them, when them gentrify downtown, and the people in downtown start to move uptown. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, we are telling you, sir. Mm -mm. I tell you, the people, them nasty, man, them nasty. So, oh, me can't sit down here to answer that. Oh, me can't drive up and look and see that. Say so, something going to give if them do balance what them are do with where them should I do and that is yeah you are prepared for now but want to down the line want to the sustaining of these things down the line you need somebody to see and I say well for instance if you build this the way there will it be able to facilitate something else down the line if we decide say well we're head and with headspace move in another direction just simple you know you don't make no preparation for down the line that is what them do with the water thing they might build the dam them but them now figure say down the line when the population get big where we have to do that is really what we have to have when we say down the line you know you have clear out certain place to build housing project and housing project means say I can't tell them I don't know, they might build it on the flat land. That is what they might do. They might should have put the, 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 the food on the flat land. But them use up the flat land for build housing projects. So warm to when a flood come, a rain really start fall. When the place flood out, them not them never think on that. Them know say them not think on it. They just have build, 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 and a boat, 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 and a show up, say, well, you see, we have built a certain portion of houses in that time, and we're building that in that time. People now can't get place to live. Yeah, it look good now. But once to down the road, 
Yes. Go on to the road we're leading to. All of these buildings. Is there a road there? Go on to the people that will live under those skyscrapers where we see I put up. Where you can't stand up, be up there so I look down in a man dead room. <laughs> It's amazing, man. It's amazing. So here yeah, we are now. We're going to play this. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.